It's not about me anymore. It's it's the new glasses. Happy Monday. I feel more like myself than I have in a very long time. Since I got my tattoo. I think since I got like this tattoo, this is the most recent one. This Jeffrey. It was also Jeffrey. It's one of my guys. Um, you know, I felt like me. I felt like my alien interdimensional self. Like even as you look at me now, do I look more like an alien? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I chose to decorate myself the way that I saw fit. And that makes me feel like me. And, but where's the line? You know, where's the line? Like, I know I'm an alien. Like, without questioning, I'm an interdimensional being, I'm a consciousness running this avatar, I'm not the Sarah. I can, at this moment, like, check in with a few different past lives of myself like as i'm living with you i can like astral travel i can go all over the place like you can do this too this isn't like a like a boast there's a point to this um so i can see you know my lemurian self my atlantean self i can see you know i was one of the first blue eyes in my tribe and like it was a big deal i was you know this or that or this or that or this or that um but you know these these glasses make me my human avatar feel a little bit more like myself. You know, for me, I'm not, it's not advantageous for my personal human body to, you know, modify it to be an alien. You know, I know that there are people that, you know, slit their tongue like the lizards and, you know, some people that feel more, you know, male, will transition to male and some people that feel more female will transition to female. You know, I myself have identified as they, them, as fairy, as alien numerous times in my, during my awakening, during the most confusing times of my awakening. That's how I identified. Um, because that's how I felt in that moment. I did not feel like I belonged in this body. And even in this moment now, as I'm speaking to you, I can tell you that I'm a consciousness that's running this avatar, this meat suit. And I love her. I love her. My sweet Sarah. She's gorgeous. Mm, beautiful. Really doing, you know, the inner trauma work, the inner deep divine feminine work and recognizing so many different layers and patterns that had, you know, showed me that I needed to step more into a masculine role. And I, and I did need to do that. I needed to defend myself and protect myself from many men that I allowed in that were not of sound mind. Um, I was also put on birth control pills when I was 12 years old. And just a year or so ago, I removed my IUD by choice, or you know, I got it removed by choice. And it took a year for Flo to come back, but it, took incredible processing to recognize that certain things that I definitely thought and knew at that time I wanted and enjoyed and desired. The whole thing's shifting and changing. Sexual desires are shifting and changing. Um, a friend of mine who is also going off birth control pills, she's saying that there's, you know, smells and the way that we're attracted to things. It all changes. You know, this is not just my language. This is, you know, there's just like, studies and, and tons and tons and tons. So do your own research on this. This is just my experience of what I'm going through. And just, you know, I don't have the answer to this. Where's the line? You know, where's the line for, for you and where's the line for me? For me personally, you know, I'm getting more tattoos. I'm getting more piercings. I will, you know, let my hair grow long, but I'll wear glasses and be very ostentatious in my, presen in my presentation. You know, I dance down Main Street. I don't give a flying fuck. Because that's how I feel. That's who I am. On the inside, that's my soul. That's my being. That's my light. That's me showing my light to the world. That's me being my flowery self. And yes, like I will, you know, 
have needles put in my body. I will dye my hair. I will do these things. You know, I'm really grateful for the fact that when I was in a manipulated space, when I was, you know, had different chemicals, you know, firing and affecting the receptors in my brain, I'm grateful that I didn't, you know, transition my body. I didn't transition my body. There was times I felt more male. There was times I felt more completely androgynous. There's times I literally felt fairy. You know, I, I just sometimes have dreams that one day I literally sprout wings like very X-Men style, and I like don't know what to do. I'm like, do I call someone? I'm like, Sabatu, what do I do? I'm like, how much can I go to work? Like, I don't know. Like, but, but where's the line? You know, we're also in Pisces season. Illusion, fantasy, you know, manipulation, you know, certain music certain music that you listen to maybe maybe you hear something you're like this sounds really gross really gross like all of a sudden it's like dirty weird you know for myself personally I you know also have past lives where I was sold to the child sex trafficking ring you know I you know was a part of the you know Illuminati these are past lives We've seen it, We've seen all of it. So as I unfold these layers and I unfold those traumas and I unfold, cause that's, that's for a lot of people that could be super confusing. A past life trauma, what? Something that I did not experience in this physical body in this physical form is affecting me in this form now? Yeah, it is, yeah, it is. So when you look at that, you say, oh my God, I have this experience. Maybe that's why you enjoyed this certain thing sexually. Maybe that's why you enjoyed this experience that you thought was healthy, but that really wasn't as healthy as you needed it to be. Or it was super healthy at that time, but once you unpacked the trauma, you're like, I really don't need to role play in that area arena anymore. I understand why I felt maybe comfortable in that arena. I felt comfortable in that space because I had at a certain other time been there. So it's like that weird warm blanket, but now I want something healthy. I want something healthy. Uh, you know, there was, you know, a reel or something that I had seen about, you know, when you unpack sexual trauma, you, you know, you go from like a derogatory kink to like a praise kink. You're just like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be told how crappy I am. I want to be reminded how beautiful I am and how lovely I am. Or, you know, when you're harmed by a man, you gotta get hardened. You gotta, you gotta fucking get into your mask and you're like, come at me, bro. What, what, how are you unpacking your traumas? You wanna date me? How are you dealing with your shit? How are you dealing with your shit? It's not this new person's fault that some dude, some bro burned you. Deal with your own problems. I need to deal with my stuff for a bit and look at my things. Say, wow, you gave your power away. You gave your power away numerous times over and over and over so it's not any new dude's problem that you've been burned you don't have to come out like this you look at your wounded masculine you can soften you can soften you can soften um, another identity thing that i'm unpacking you know I've had my sides, my hair shaved for so long. It was a big deal. You know, I really, at that time, I wasn't allowed to cut my hair. I was with somebody that I'd given all my power and control to. We were soulmates. We were, you know, had past lives together. We were twin flames and soulmates. But I, I promise you, if we stayed together in this lifetime, one of us would have been dead. It probably would have been me. So sometimes, even if someone is your soulmate, if they feel like your twin flame, sometimes... This is a lesson and you were or are at one point in time, but you don't have to live that trauma out in this lifetime. You don't have to live it out. And then, you know, when you get to the core of these traumas, you know, they, they usually come from mom and dad. They usually come from mom and dad or lack thereof, 
or over attention of or too little attention of or inappropriate attention of. I'm actually terrified <laughs> to do this video that I know what I have to do, which is called. And then there was mother. <sighs> because As we do this inner divine feminine work and this inner divine healing and we get to our softness and we find our femininity and we find our balance and then our balanced partner approaches us and finds us, you know, they also have parents that have affected them. They also have traumas that they're dealing with. What's fascinating to me is the divine masculine right now is in this beautiful blossoming. It's in this beautiful coming to be where the conversation and the manipulation and all the different things that have happened really are like showing their ugly head. But what's troublesome for these men as they're learning to stand in their power, you know, maybe the mother that taught them how to stay small isn't ready to step into her divine feminine. Maybe she's divine masculine or bearing the sun. So then the sun stands in his power. And mother is fucking pissed. 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 Because you were my pseudo husband. You were the pseudo man that I could latch onto for an extended period of time, if not my entire lifetime. Because I don't want to look at the man that I'm standing next to or lack thereof. And by you unpacking your traumas, son, I have to now look at mine with my husband's. I'm not attracted to him. I'm not interested in him. We're legally married because we have to be. It's been too long. We've dealt with this. Oh, no, nope. I'm looking at you because I'm more interested in you and having more of a relationship with you that crosses too many boundaries. I'm talking to you, son. I don't want to look at the husband that's standing there. He's in his feminine. Mm -mm. No, he's in his feminine. I don't want to look at him. And the father, you know, in his afraid feminine is not, you know, giving their children or their wife the attention that they appropriately need. They might still be a boy sitting at the dinner table having to eat their Brussels sprouts. You see, see the patterns that are happening here. But because, if you're here with me now, the whole thing is so confusing. It's happening all at the same time. We're all waking up. There's all this information. Blah, 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 blah. We grasp onto any version of control, any version of control, any version of attention seeking behavior. This is, this is who I am. I'm very aware that I don't need to post as many selfies as I do about my glasses. And I don't give a shit because it makes me happy. I do it for me. I've dealt with the parental issues. I've dealt with that. I've dealt with having to cut out. I've dealt with all these things. The why I needed to go into more masculine behavior, why I needed to physically present in a more masculine behavior, unpack a lot of that childhood, sexual trauma, adolescent issues, which uncle did this, what happened, all that, A, B, and C. So when I got to the core of my being, when I got, I'm not my glasses. I'm not what mother has done to me. I'm not what father has done to me. I'm not what happened to my sisters. I am not bisexual. I am not this. I am not that. I am not the queer. I'm not the alien. I'm not this. 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 I am consciousness running this avatar. I'm consciousness. I'm a beam of consciousness. And I love that beam of consciousness. And I love that beam of consciousness so much. And it's perfect. And it didn't fuck anything up. And it's not its fault. And it's not its job. It's not the amount of money in the bank account. It's not anything. I am.
And when I learned to love that am, the I, learn to love the I without the am, without the anything else. That's when I bought the glasses. That's when I stopped reaching out. That's when I stopped double texting. That's when I started, you know, painting again or, you know, doing my body art again. My acrylic on body, wrapping all up in it, getting that healing energy on the canvas while listening to specific music and tones and just putting... There's so much in it. There's so much in it. There's so much in it. Bits of my being and soul and the physical healing from my body and skin and hands and my hands on healer as well goes into the piece. And it doesn't have to make a fucking sense to anybody. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody. I don't have to convince anyone my visions. I don't have to convince anyone that I'm an alien. I don't have to convince anyone that it's my final lifetime. I don't have to convince anyone that their children are speaking to me telepathically. I don't have to convince you who I am. I don't have to do anything. I can grow my hair. I can be feminine. I can have a different opinion from the Sarah that I was yesterday because I don't need to prove anything to anyone. I'm not proving to you who I am. I'm saying, this is me. This is, it, it just is. It's not a for you, it's a for me. It's not attention seeking, it's I am attention. What is that Jim Carrey? I cannot be contained because I am the container. Be your motherfucking flower, be yourself. But where's the line? Where's the line? Where's the line from, you know, if I had been given the opportunity when I was identifying as the they, them, I might have transitioned my body to something more androgynous. Where's the line? Where's the line? I don't need to, you know, I, I don't need you to see see me and say, hey, alien Sarah, how are you today? You just say whatever the fuck you want because that's your reality. You don't even, you don't know me. I don't know you. So where's the line? Where's the line for you? What would you need within your life to feel good knowing who you are? Do you need someone around you to say, hey, you... I will call you by your name, your chosen name, whatever you need to be called. Does, does that matter more? Or is it, I feel this way, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about me, it doesn't matter what they say about me, it doesn't matter what they think or whatever, because I am, or I, where's the line? Where's your line? Does it fluctuate? Because I find that the more natural I become, the more, and by saying natural, I mean I eat organic food as much as I possibly can. I drink clean water, you know, no fluoride or anything like that. I meditate as often as I can. I, you know, I'm exercising. Sarah, I'm going to yoga. I will go to yoga. I'm going to yoga. I'm going back to yoga. I'm unpacking yoga traumas from lifetime, okay? I'm packing yoga traumas. I know, I know, I heard it too. But stepping into you being your true self, your most authentic self does matter. But can we find the love for ourselves within ourselves first, at the core of ourselves first, before we adjust our external appearance or before we move, before we change ourselves, before we do anything, can we learn to love the I and accept that as we are, where we are, as we're standing in this skin, in this body? I 
I think that's Monday's video. I think that's our topic for today, which doesn't even have an answer. It doesn't even have, this is philosophizing as it, as it, at its best. So, yeah, how do you feel? Where's your line? Do you feel like yourself inside, through and through, in every pore of your being? And if you don't, can you love yourself in every pore of your being? Before that, can, can, can the love come first? Before you move, before you make changes, before you get the tattoo, before you change the clothes, before you do any of that, can you find the love first? Because you're lovable in this breath. In this breath, you're lovable. In this breath, you're worthy. In this breath. Thank you. I love you.